Greetings students and welcome back to another video on nonlinear dynamics. In this lesson we're going to prove a pretty important theorem in differential equations which I'll call the impossibility of oscillations. And afterwards we're going to discuss the concept of potentials in nonlinear dynamics. Now the impossibility of oscillations theorem says that if I had a one-dimensional autonomous dynamical system given by dx by dt equals f of x, then the solution x of t to this dynamical system or differential equation will never be periodic. So if I were to draw a graph of x versus t and if I had some stable fixed point up here, then this theorem states that no matter what my f of x is, my solution x of t will not oscillate. So it won't look like this where it oscillates around a fixed point, it's going to instead monotonically converge towards the fixed point like this. The proof of this theorem is pretty simple and it works by contradiction. Now just a reminder that whenever you're proving a negative statement, like when something's impossible, then it's generally common practice to use proof by contradiction. Now we'll start this proof by assuming the opposite of what we want to prove. So we'll assume that x of t is a periodic function, that's the solution to this dynamical system, and the period of this periodic function is capital T. Now because of this periodicity we know that x of t must equal x of t plus capital T. Now for this proof I'm going to consider the following integral, the integral from t to t plus capital T of f of x times dx by dt dt. Let's simplify this integral and since we have dx by dt times dt at the end we can simplify all of that to dx by quote unquote cancelling the dt. And since we're now integrating over x we also have to change the limits to limits in x. Because x of t is periodic, these limits both equal each other, so instead of integrating f of x over an interval, we're integrating it over a point. As a result, the value of this definite integral must equal zero if x of t is a periodic function. Let's now go back to our original integral and approach it in a slightly different manner. From the equation for dx by dt, we know that dx by dt equals f of x, so let's replace the f of x here by dx by dt, and we'll get the integral from t to t plus capital T of dx by dt squared. Now dx by dt isn't trivial, it's not necessarily always zero, which means that the square of dx by dt can be largely positive. And if we're integrating something positive over a finite non-zero interval, obviously since capital T must be greater than zero, then the result must be positive as well. But the fact that this integral must be positive contradicts the fact that it equals zero when we assume that the function x was periodic. Therefore, we can conclude that the solution x to this autonomous ODE must not be periodic, which proves that oscillations are impossible for this dynamical system. Keep in mind that the impossibility of oscillations only applies to one-dimensional autonomous dynamical systems. If I had something like dx by dt equals f of x comma t, so my function of dx by dt was also dependent on time, then oscillations would not be impossible here because I've effectively introduced another variable that the function f depends on. I've introduced t, and as a result of introducing t, I've made the system two-dimensional effectively. And because the system is now two-dimensional, oscillations are no longer impossible. My impossibility theorem only applies to systems of the form dx by dt equals f of x. Now let's move on and talk a bit about potentials, which is presented here as a mathematical concept that comes from physics. So suppose I have a one-dimensional dynamical system given by dx by dt equals f of x. The potential v of x is defined by the following relation where dv by dx equals negative f of x, or negative dv by dx equals f of x. But why do we care about potential? Why is it so important to us? Well, let me show you why it's so important using the rate of change of potential with time, using dv by dt in other words. By the chain rule we know that dv by dt must equal dv by dx times dx by dt. And we already know that dx by dt is f of x from the equation for our dynamical system, and that dv by dx equals negative f of x from the definition of potential. So therefore, dv by dt 
is negative f of x whole squared. But because f of x is a real number, its square must be either positive or zero. Its square must be greater than or equal to zero. This means that dv by dt, which is negative f of x whole squared, must be the opposite. It must be less than or equal to zero. What does this mean? Well, it means that no matter what one-dimensional system we have, no matter what differential equation is used to describe that system, the potential will always decrease with time. So there's a tendency for potential to fall in a dynamical system that's one-dimensional. Let's use an example to illustrate this point. If I had a dynamical system with a potential v of x that looked like this, and if my x started somewhere here, then over time my x would gradually deviate towards this dip in the potential. Why? Well, because my system will have a tendency to decrease the potential with time because dv by dt is less than or equal to zero. And the only way my system's potential can go down is if x deviates towards this dip, towards this local minimum. But what happens if I start out at this local maximum in potential and I deviate my x slightly away from this local maximum? Well, then because the potential tends to decrease, my x would shoot down towards a lower value of potential. So from these quick thought experiments, we can see that local minima in potential are places where dynamical systems like to converge, and local maxima in potential are places from which dynamical systems like to diverge. So the local minima and local maxima in V of x are very similar to stable and unstable fixed point. In fact, Local minima in V of x correspond to stable fixed points of the dynamical system, and local maxima in V of x correspond to unstable fixed points. Now you might ask, why do local minima and local maxima, presumably places where dv by dx is zero, why do these points correspond to fixed points of dx by dt equals f of x? Well, it comes from the potential definition that we described earlier. Since f of x is negative dv by dx, places where dv by dx is zero correspond to places where f of x is zero, and places where f of x is zero are places where dx by dt is zero, and places where dx by dt is zero are fixed points by definition. So by extension, places where dv by dx equals zero are therefore fixed points. Hopefully this discussion should clear up some of the intuition behind potentials and how they work. Let's now go ahead and apply this intuition to a real problem. And the problem goes like this. Suppose dx by dt equals x minus x cubed. So my function f of x is x minus x cubed. Our task is to graph the potential and then find the fixed points and the stability of those fixed points of this dynamical system. So let's get started. We know from the definition of potential that dv by dx equals negative of x minus x cubed, which is x cubed minus x. If we want to plot the potential as a function of x, all we have to do is integrate this derivative. And when we do that, we'll get x4 over 4 minus x squared over 2 plus a constant. Now, it doesn't matter what value our constant takes on, so we can just set it to 0 and go about our business. So let's solve the first part of the problem, which is to graph the potential v of x. And when we do that, we'll get something that looks like this. And now that we've plotted the potential, we can go ahead and solve the rest of the problem. From our discussion before, we know that the fixed points of the dynamical system correspond to stationary points on the potential v of x, so places like local minima and local maxima. As a result, the fixed points of our dynamical system are negative 1, 0, and 1, and you can easily see this from the equation for dv by dx, because negative 1, 0, and 1 make dv by dx equal to 0. But what about the stability of these fixed points? Well, as we discussed earlier, local minima in the graph of potential correspond to stable fixed points, since that's where the dynamical system likes to go. It likes to go towards areas with a low potential. And as a result, x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 are our stable fixed points since they are the minima of this potential curve. Meanwhile, unstable fixed points correspond to local maxima in the graph of the potential because that's where the dynamical system runs away from. It would much rather go to regions of lower potential as opposed to regions of higher potential. 
Therefore, x equals zero is an unstable fixed point because it's a local maximum. Now you could easily find the exact same answers for the fixed points of dx dt equals x minus x cubed using linear stability analysis, which I discussed in the previous video. So using potential is another convenient way to analyze the behavior of a dynamical system. In fact, I encourage you to use linear stability analysis on the example that we just solved and show that it gives you the same answers as using the potential v of x. Anyway, that does it for this video. In the next lesson, we're going to get into the fun stuff with some bifurcation theory. I'll finish off by thanking the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've linked my Patreon account in the description so you can check it out. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.